Doug here. Welcome back to yet another board game channel. And yet another episode of Arkham Horror the Card Game, our first actual gameplay video. So, our investigators, Daisy and Skids, are in a study that has no door. How are we going to get out of this one? Well, we're going to investigate. How, are we, how do we investigate? Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go with Daisy's turn first. doesn't matter what order the um, investigators go in. The lead investigator, Skids, is only called that so that somebody has to make the decisions. And we ended up choosing Skids at random. It's his place we're in. But... You don't have to, he doesn't have to go first, so we will instead be using Daisy Walker, and, um, yeah, let's see what it looks like when she investigates. Okay, there's Daisy. She is going to investigate, look around the study, see if she can find any clues, and the way you get those clues is by testing... Your intellect. In her case, it's a five. So what you do is you see what the shroud value of the location is. In this case, it's two. So we need to beat a two. Well, she is currently beating a two with a five. However, we will draw a token out of the chaos bag, which could raise or more likely lower her um, her ability score. We're probably pretty safe not using any modifiers as um, a negative three would be okay because she'd tie it. The only thing that would really mess us up would be a negative four or um, the tentacles which are an auto-fail. You can see because we're doing standard, um, we've only got a single negative four. These other icons, I don't think they'll really mess things up, at least not the way things currently are. So I think investigators get three actions every turn. Oh, one thing I forgot to point out. On the first round, the rounds actually start with the mythos phase except the first time round. They actually give us a little bit of a break, and we get to go into the investigation phase right away. This will happen later, though. Anyway, so yes, three things. There are a number of things she can do. I'll just bring them up as I use them. Uh, you can have a look there. Uh, just pause your screen. But yeah, I think we're just, given her really excellent intellect, I'm just going to jump right in and try to get a whole bunch of clues and move us on. So, her Daisy's first action. She's going to investigate and look for a clue. So, let's... Okay, I'm looking away, and I pick a... Plus one, so she, yeah, very easily noticed an important clue. We'll just put that with her, uh, her supplies. Second action, well, let's just do it again. Oh, did I, yes, I put the token back in. The tokens always go back in, even if you get a redraw, which will sometimes happen. Again, not looking and choosing. Oh, wow. Got the plus one again. Daisy is killing it. Go librarians. So she's got two for her third action. Well, let's just see if Daisy's luck holds. There's only two things in here that will cause her to fail this check. And, oh, stuck together. Can't see what I'm choosing. Ah, negative four. She failed. Now, nothing bad happens 
from the failure, at least in this instance. I'm sure there will be scenarios in which it would be bad. As it is, she just fails. But she did get two of the four clues. So, good on Daisy. She has done everything she can do this round. I may forget to turn these over occasionally. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, move on to Skids. Now, Skids isn't quite as book learny as uh, Daisy, and he's only got an intellect of three versus the two, so he, um, yeah, basically we, we need to, if he's going to investigate, we're going to have to give him a little bit more of an edge. So, what we're going to do for our first action is play an event or asset card from hand. He is going to play his flashlight, which is going to cost him two resources. Throw this away. And we will put this into play in his, uh, well, his zone. Um, right. It can be used three times, so we're going to take three resources. They don't actually count as resources for him. They are just going to be counters to let us know how many times we have left to use the flashlight. Now, for a second action, we'll go ahead and have him investigate. But he's going to use his flashlight once, and we can see what it does. Spend one supply. We've done that. Put it away. He gets to investigate, but your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. So instead of two, it actually has a shroud value of zero. So now Skids is doing three versus zero instead of three versus two. So it's a little bit of an improvement. Uh, we could also discard... Actually, only burglary would uh, improve his intellect. And that would just be a one-time thing. We would put this into his discard pile and never see it again, most likely. Um, so I think we're just going to have him try to investigate using his flashlight. Okay, here we are back at the study. Going to see what extra modifier Skid gets. Skids. It's on his intellect. Nothing big. This is his second action. Uh, looking away, and I've grabbed a zero. That's okay. It doesn't means he. It doesn't get altered, which means, yay, he got it. He actually would have gotten it without the flashlight, as it turns out. But you never know when that's going to happen. Well, as that was kind of a success. Do we dare push our luck? Don't want to use the flashlight too much right away, because I'm sure we'll be investigating to do later on. So yeah, for his third act, uh, third action, yeah, just go for it. Let's let's investigate once more. So now he's doing three. Ah oh, man, three versus three versus two. He would only want a negative one that were better, so there's that would mean there's one, two, one, two, three, three, three possible tokens in here that would make him. Oh, actually, more than that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five. Oh, okay. Let's save that last clue for Daisy because she will definitely kill it. Next turn. Um, so what I will do for Skids' third action is... Tell you what, one thing you can also do is... Whoa, glare. Uh, draw a card or gain a resource. Let's, let's grab another card. Let's get him back up to five and see what, hap uh, see what he gets. See if it will be useful in future. 
You get hard knocks. It's an asset. Talent. It costs two to put into the active area. And then as a free action, be able to spend a resource and get plus one to combat or plus one to agility. Okay. That sounds useful enough. All right, that concludes the investigator phase. Uh, next up would be the enemy phase. However, we don't have any enemies active yet. I'm sure that will change in a moment. Uh, enemies with the hunter keyword move towards nearest investigator. No enemies at all, and each engaged enemy attacks. All right, that means, uh, see, I told you I'd forget to turn that over when Skids was done. Because, yeah, the first part of the upkeep phase is reset that to make them active again. Reset all, uh, ready all exhausted cards. We don't have any. Each investigator draws one card and gains one resource. So we'll get a resource for Skids, a resource for Daisy, and we'll see what cards they get. Skids grabs a card, and oh, he has found an emergency cache as well, which he would be able to use, spend an action to get more resources. Daisy, ah, gets a magnifying glass, which costs one to put into play. Fast, it means it doesn't actually cost an action. It still costs the one resource. But you can just throw it out there without using up one of your three actions. Uh, item tool, and you get a plus one intellect while investigating. A lens into a world unseen could reveal things you wish it hadn't. And that will fill up one of her hands. So yeah, that's a good one. Uh, especially as it doesn't take up an action to play. Uh, then, the final thing you do on an entire round is each investigator checks hand size. You can't have more than eight cards at a time, but they each have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm pretty sure Daisy also has one, two, three, four, five, six. And that concludes the first turn. So let's go uh, right into another one. That didn't take too long. Future turns will take longer. And this time, you get to see the Mythos phase. What fun. All right. Starting a new round. This time, we do, in fact, have the dreaded Mythos phase. First thing we do is place one Doom on the agenda. So we take the red side of one of these and put it on there. So we're a third of the way to that card activating and having something else bad happen to us. That's bad enough, but now, right, at that point we would advance the agenda if there were enough. Each investigator draws one card from the top of the encounter pile. This is where things start to get messy. So, first up, Skids will pick one. Might as well, as he's lead investigator, and he gets... He has found some rotting remains, probably thinking, what the hell is this doing in my study? It's a terror, no kidding, a sickening display of gore causes you to retch. You're glad this wasn't you. It's just too bad it's our house. Now, revelation, that means that when this is revealed, we have to do this right away. So, we will be testing Skids' willpower against a value of three. And for each point you fail, he's going to have to take a terror. Now, his... Uh, do, 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 do. His willpower is only two, so he's already down by one. So let's see if there's anything... Well, I really don't want to give up his dynamite blast. Because that'll become useful when a big bad shows up, as it inevitably will. But I could discard physical training to gain one value towards it. So, yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll discard that, put it in his discard pile, which means 
he is now drawing um, with three intellect versus a test of three. So we want a zero or better. It's not likely. Um, but yeah, hopefully we will lessen the amount of horror that he takes. Looking away, and... <laughs> total fail. That's extremely bad. That means it all gets through, and he takes three horror, which puts him halfway to insane. And thus knocked out. Well, lovely. Had to be that one. Okay. So, uh, in that case, let us, uh, yes, now Daisy gets to pick her horrible card. What does she get? Oh, she gets an event as well. Crypt Chill. Hazard. Revelation. Got to test her intellect versus four. Yikes. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. She doesn't have any assets she controls currently. Because she hasn't played any of them. Uh, and if she cannot, take two damage instead. It would have been really great if these two had been switched. The supernatural cold threatens to freeze your soul. Because she is at three. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they both would have struggled doing the test, but um, it'd be better if Skids took physical damage and Daisy took mental damage, but that's not what happened. All right. So, do we have anything that will increase? Yes, uh, she has a single card. Yeah, I think we're going to have to discard the Arcane Initiate to use that and uh, have her working at a uh, willpower of five. A four, rather. Four versus four. So just like Skids, we want anything that's not a failure or a negative number. And, oh, remind myself what that is. That is uh, a minus two. If there's a ghoul enemy in location, at least that's not the case. Wow. That sucks. So, uh, that was a four versus four. So, she only takes two damage. She only failed by two. However, that leaves her with um, not so many hit points. This may be a washout. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, let's discard those. Put those into the discard pile. I almost would have preferred horrible monsters. Now we could have used stuff against them. Oh well, so much for that. Now we are going to move back into the investigation phase. Just realized I, I resolved it wrong but correctly at the same time. So she failed by two, so she took two damage. Well, no, it, it was a fail or succeed, period. But she still just took two damage. So I was wrong and right at the same time. All right. Daisy's turn. She is going to, first of all, I'm going to have her spend a resource and put her magnifying glass into play, because that would be very useful for investigating. So I'm going to put that in her active area. That didn't count as an action, because it said fast. So now, she is going to investigate for her second action. So she is now actually investigating at a six intellect. 
versus a two shroud. So yeah, she's killing it. This is a low level room. They'll get harder. So we're going to choose, uh, basically we don't want a negative four or an auto fail. Uh, not looking and that's a negative one, which is plenty. So she picks up the last clue, which means we can go straight into resolving the act. So let's just relocate. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, there we are. We need four, and it doesn't have any timing listed, so uh, Skid's got one, Daisy got three, so we'll be turning in the four, which will allow us to turn over the trapped card to see what happens next. Just a moment. I think I need to zoom out a wee bit. There we go. You notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, uh-huh, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut above you, the smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. So now it's going to give us instructions on setup. Um, let's just zoom out for a moment. Alright, first thing it tells us to do is put into play the set-aside hallway, cellar, attic, and parlor. All in there locked to start with. Hallway. A moment of panic and disorientation strikes as you land upon the floor of the hallway. The world spins as if turned on its head. Put the hallway into play. The cellar. The stairs leading down to your cellar are slick and they glisten with a thin layer of ice. I'll put that there. The attic. The smell of rotten meat assaults your nostrils as you approach the attic stairs. And finally, the parlor. The entrance to the parlor is blocked by a darkly glowing, unfathomable barrier. You cannot move into the parlor. You're unsure what would happen if you tried to cross the threshold of the strange barrier, but based on its extreme heat, you sure as hell don't want to try. Now, what all these little icons on here mean, see, each location has a little icon on the top that indicates which ones you're able to travel between. So the hallway, you can see, could lead us to all three of the other locations, except for the parlor, because we can't actually get in there yet. Yeah, um, whereas each of the others... simply goes back to the hallway. All right, that was the first step. Next, discard each enemy in the study. We didn't have any. Would have been nice if we got an enemy's last turn then. Place each investigator in the hallway, which means we get to flip it over and reveal And now it says, the walls of your house are splattered with mud and your hardwood floor is gone, replaced by a, uh, with, bleh, replaced with a dirt path. No clues appear in this location, unfortunately. Although it does have a shroud of one. This would make tests harder to do here. Finally, it says, remove the study from the game. We're gone from the study. It is now inaccessible. We just can't get back to that. So, we've done that. Which means we'll just discard that up there. And now, we get 
Act Two. The Barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. There's a hint. Objective. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group, spend the requisite number of clues to advance. In this case, we will need six. Three per investigator. So hopefully there's a lot of clues lying around. So we'll put that there. And that is that. Meanwhile, Daisy has one more action. Um, let's see. Let me think about what I want her to do. Actually, I didn't have to think very hard. I just, for her third action, I think we're going to get her to move. Um, I don't think we need to put anything into play. At least not yet. Um... On the other hand, maybe maybe I should get some abilities into play before we start wandering around the place. Maybe I'll spend two resources to activate her hyper-awareness. Yeah, let's do that. She has quite a few resources, so let's uh, put them to use. I'm going to put that into play. So now she'll be able to uh, freely use resources to improve uh, her intellect, which is not a big deal, because her intellect's already pretty darn good. But it'll also increase her agility, which is fairly low. And she may have to do some fighting. Alright, that's Daisy. Now, let's see if I can figure out what I want Skids to do. Alright, Skids' turn. Um, before I go into it, I'll, I rearrange these a little bit. I, uh, Sort of had them backwards. I had the, uh, the the cellar up higher and the attic down lower. Doesn't affect the game play in any way, but it just makes more sense to keep the cellar below and the attic above. Speaking of the cellar, um, Skiz's first movement will be moving him to the cellar, which means we'll get to flip it over and see what lays beneath. Uh, right, your cellar seems to have been replaced with an underground network of icy tunnels and caverns. The cold chills you to the core. It's got a, ouch, shroud of four. It's going to make everything here difficult to do. And uh, we're going to have four clues spawn, two per investigator. So let's just Two, one, two, three, and four. All right. Um, so, for his second action, what are we going to have Skids do? Um, I think I'm going to put into play... Okay, I'm going to put the hard knocks, going to spend two of his four resources to put the hard knocks out, which will allow us to get some um, extra combat and agility, which I suspect will be necessary once monsters start appearing. We're going to spend two resources, leaving him with two. For his third action, well, he could investigate, but it's not going to go well. His uh, his intellect is only three. The location has a shroud of four, so he's already at a negative one. Uh, it could hmm. 
could use the burglary to get him back up to basically zero. Given the uh, the four shroud uh, versus three plus one for intellect, so we'd have to pull anything that was a zero or better out of here, which is you know in theory possible. Uh, the odds aren't really especially good. Anyway, I think maybe we'll just prepare for next turn, see if we can get some better stuff going on. And we're going to play, takes up an action, but it doesn't cost any resources, the emergency cash. You can never be too prepared, which will give him three resources that hopefully he can spend on some useful stuff next time round. So there we go. He'll now be up to five resources total. That will be all of his actions. So that brings us to the enemy phase. There are no enemies around to come after us yet. That will probably change at the beginning of next turn. So we'll go into the upkeep phase, which means we refresh our investigators. We don't have any tapped cards, so we're, we don't need to worry about those. Now, they each get a resource, one for Daisy, one for Skids, and they each get to pick a card. Let's see what Skids gets. Oh, <laughs> another emergency cash, which is nice, but don't have some, don't have really wonderful things to spend it on. All right, let's see what Daisy yeah, so she has drawn, oh heck, her weakness. The Necronomicon, John D. Translation. Yeah, there it is. Weakness, item, tome. Revelation, put the Necronomicon into play in your threat area with three horror on it. It cannot leave play while it has one or more horror on it. While it's up, uh, every Elder Sign she chooses from the Chaos Bag acts as a tentacle. It's an auto-fail, so she's got two auto-fails in there. As an action, she can move one horror from Necronomicon to Daisy. Oh, good. She can, she can take the sanity hits to herself. Then, if the Necronomicon has no horror on it, discard it. And this also takes up one of her hands. Oh, uh... Just a minute, I'm just going to reposition here. Okay, put the Necronomicon in her play area. Going to put three horror hits on it that she'll have to start taking on herself. Uh, fortunately, she does get one, one, um, one free action using a Tome ability, which this is. As horrible as it is, it's still a tome. So she can take one of these off the uh, the card for f as as a free action every turn. So that's something, I guess. Yeah, it's only a matter of time until that happened. Uh, now we make sure that our investigators have no more than eight cards. No, we have four and three. And that brings us to the end of another round. That was a bit of a mixed bag. We made some kind of progress getting uh, getting into the next stage of, well, getting to our second act. But I don't know what we're going to do next. We need to investigate, but Skids is not especially good at investigating. Well, we'll see next time. Uh, thanks, everybody for watching and liking and subscribing and all that. It's very much appreciated. And we will see you again next time for yet another episode of Arkham Horror, the card game. See you then.